Hi everybody, it's Claudia from Create with Claudia, and today stick around because we're doing something really cool with the AccuQuilt Go cutting system. I'm using their new Tree of Life die to make this gorgeous angel wall hanging. As many of you may know, I am an Island Boutique Ambassador. And this month, July of 2022, our challenge was uh, to do something with the brand new AccuQuilt Go Tree of Life die. Isn't this really pretty? This is the packaging. I've already opened it. I've already made it. As you can see one of my angels on the wall. The challenge was every month the uh, ambassadors get a, a certain challenge. And thank you so much to AccuQuilt Go for sponsoring this month. We love getting their dies, and I love using their machine. Um, but this month's uh, it was Christmas in July, and the challenge was to use this die, and you could make the beautiful tree of life, and you'll see their different ambassadors do all sorts of different things, or you could change it up a bit. And I felt like changing it up a bit, uh, and that's how this angel was born. I actually, what I did is I set it on point and turned it upside down, and I'm gonna show you how to color all of the different sections on this die to make this really pretty angel. But the first thing I wanna do is, um, Thank all of the sponsors again, AccuQuilt, Island Batik. I'm using uh, Aurifil thread, and of course I use Schmetz needles in my machine. And then for this one, I did use Hobbs fusible batting. I love their fusible batting. And unfortunately that was my last piece, so I need to get some more of it. Um, but anyway, uh, all of the fabrics you're gonna see, even the solids, and I'm gonna show you, I'm using a green solid for the background. I'm, I'm changing up the color a little bit in this one that I'm gonna be demonstrating with. Um, uh, but um, it is a solid, and if you have never used Island Batik solids, I highly recommend them. They just have such a nice weight to them and a nice uh, sewing. They, they, they're so nice to sew with. But let me adjust the camera. I'm going to show you really quickly just how we, I use the AccuQuilt Go system. I've already cut out all of my pieces, and I've even sewn a bunch of them together uh, to make this process a little bit quicker and make this video a little bit faster. So here is the AccuQuilt Go that I got from them as being part of the Ambassador Program. How awesome is this? And I'm going to just show you really quickly how to use the die. You open this up, and this is the manual turn one, which I really like. Let me pull it. It is pretty heavy, so uh, you got to use your muscles here. And I have a piece of fabric, and let me grab the die. So this is the AccuQuilt die, uh, Tree of Life die, excuse me. I'm gonna switch this around actually so you can see it better. And I'm gonna reference back to this a lot, especially when I'm showing you all of the fabric cuts that you need for the uh, angel that I'm making. But for right now, I'm just gonna show you really quickly how I cut out pieces. And I have a scrap piece of pay, uh, fabric, excuse me, you're gonna cut your fabric. And the instructions that come with this die tell you what size you need to cut to get the most effective use of your fabric. And then you make sure you use this cutting protecting board. And you can see <laughs> I've used it a lot. I get a lot of use. And then you just roll it through. There are other versions. I think there's an electric one. There's a smaller one. I don't know if the Tree of Life die fits all of them. You'd have to go to AccuQuilt's website to uh, check that out. So anyway, you roll this through. And of course, it's going to hit my sewing machine. Let me twist it a little bit. There we go. That's the thing with these really long dies like this one. A lot of them are shorter. And then you just pull that off. And there you go. There are your pieces, your perfectly cut triangles. You can see how that works and it's pretty green. Perfect for Christmas. A nice Kelly green. So there you go. That's how you use it. And that's how I cut out all of the pieces. So to start, and before I actually start that, let me just tell you, on my website, I have all of the um, information that you're going to need uh, listed out for you, so it's easier to follow if you want to, you know, check out the website while you're while you're making your angel. So for ain't for um, excuse me for the angel itself, you need 36 triangles of the. Uh, template B, of the AccuQuilt template B, you need 36 triangles in the angel fabric, fabric A, which in my case is white. For the angel body, which I call fabric B, you need four squares of the AccuQuilt template A. 
for the angel crown, in my case fabric C, which is this gold, you need two triangles using the AccuQuilt uh, template, excuse me, B. And then here are the big cuts and the, the ones you need to, the most of. For background fabric, this is all the background fabric, BG, you need two strips using AccuQuilt template D, two strips using the AccuQuilt template C, one strip using AccuQuilt template E, two triangles using the AccuQuilt template F, two of these shapes uh, using the AccuQuilt template G, two triangles using AccuQuilt template H, two squares using the AccuQuilt template A, and 18 triangles using the AccuQuilt template B. So that. So the other thing you're going to need, and again, remember this angel is on point, so uh, to make it square, I need four triangles of fabric, and I've already cut those for you. I had a 15 and a half inch square that I cut two times on the diagonal. So it would look, and it's not real pressed, I had it all folded up ready to do this presentation. Just so you can see it, let me just fold it out for you. So 15 and a half inch square. You can even make it 16 inches if you'd like a little bit more wiggle room because you will be trimming down your final uh, angel when it's done. But there you can go. You can see how it just is cut in the diagonal. 15 and a half inch square. You'll need that to make it finish. And if you like the border, that's if you, you know, if you want that border, I put a red border on mine. On this one, I put a red one. and the other one, it's a, like a silver. You need two border strips cut two and a half inches by 20 inches, and then two border strips cut two and a half inches by 24 and a half inches, okay? So that'll give you a nice, nice big border over, sort of finish off the angel a little bit. It's a nice, makes it a nice wall size hanging. And last but not least, and this is again, if you desire to, I added some snowflakes. I thought it was a little blank up on top. There's a lot of room on the top of the, the angel block, especially once you've added the four corners to make it square. So what I did is I had this template for a snowflake and you can get that over on my website. So I used some, um, some heat and bond Paperback Heat and Bond Fusible uh, applique. It's nice. I use the Ultra Hold. I like that nice thick. And then I traced out my shape. Very easy to do. I traced that out on the back. Um, I printed that out in black. And then when I traced it out, I followed the instructions of the Heat and Bond. And I used this fun white island batik fabric with little dots on it. I thought that was kind of perfect. It looked like snowflakes. Um, you know, cut around this so that it fits on your fabric. Press whatever uh, applique, um, uh, paperback applique product you're using, following their, make sure to follow their instructions. Um, again, I use Heat and Bond for mine. And then you have a piece like this, you cut it out, and then again, following the instructions, you remove that paper backing, and then you have these great snowflakes, which we'll put on, put on at the end uh, when we're almost ready to finish this up. I like putting these on at the end so I know exactly where to position them. So one of the things you're going to definitely want to do is run over to my website and you want to get, I have this as a, a, a downloadable PDF, and you want to print out this pattern. It's just a blank so you can use any color you want. And I've made some notes on them because I'm going to show you how I do this step by step. The very first thing you want to do is join up, remember all those triangles, those small B, uh, AccuQuilt template B triangles we made? You're going to make a lot of different squares with them. You're going to join them up. I am going to put on the screen how much you need of each one, uh, and that will help you out uh, when you're pairing these up. But once you're done, all of your half square triangles should be, uh, excuse me, the small triangles uh, that you made should be uh, used up, and then we're ready to sew it all together. So the first thing you want to do is get together all of those pairs that I'm showing you on the screen right now and sew them up and um, press them and then we will be ready to uh, start assembling the angel. Okay, so for the first part of the angel block we need to make that big square at the bottom and again you're going to refer back to your pattern that I have on my website. The first thing you're going to do 
is you are going to, I'm going to move these aside a little bit, you're going to sew these two sections here on this edge and really pay attention to the placement. They should fit perfectly and they do. I love this AccuCool cutting system. Uh, it's a little hard to see with the green, I can tell, but you're going to line those up and you're going to sew along this and you're going to repeat with this one and then press those and then I'll come back and show you the next part to putting together this bottom square. All right, so here we go, we're moving along. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to sew this to this, these two pieces to this center, um, this center piece, I believe that was E, on both sides using, and if, one thing I did forget to mention, don't forget, always use that quarter inch seam allowance. That makes these pieces come out perfectly. So I'm gonna do that again, sewing this to this, and this to this, and then I'll show you what the next step looks like. All right, now you can see how it's coming along. We're almost done with this bottom square. You're just going to add those triangle Fs to each end of this, and then we will set this section aside and then start on the angel part. All right, my friends, there we go. There's the bottom section, one corner of the uh, block for the angel that we're making, and I'm going to set this aside. Now, you might say, hey, these are all the same color. Uh, why did you use all the cuts? Acucool all of their cuts are so precise, I didn't want to mess with the system. I mean, you could easily come over here and measure it, but it might not be exactly what you're looking for, so I don't want to mess with their measurements and their cutting system. And this also gives you the opportunity, if you didn't want this all one solid, and you'll see at the end how it turns out, maybe you want to add some color to it. So that's why I use all the pieces. So the next row we're going to do is what I call my row number two. And let me just get all the pieces for you. And again, don't forget, I have this all laid out. In the, uh, I have uh, pictures of everything on my website to help you out. So for this one, for row number two, what I consider row number two, you're going to need the one strip of the background fabric that's cut with the template D. And then you're going to need two squares that were both pieced with the white, the angel fabric, fabric A, and then one of the AccuQuilt template A's in fabric B. I know that's a little confusing, but this is that body that runs sort of down the middle of the angel. And you're just gonna piece this together and this will be your row number two. And then we set that aside again. All right, so here is my row or my section two that I'm gonna call that. And so section number three has one of the, the white squares, has another one of those blue A, um, it's uh, squared A on the AccuQuilt guide, but I'm using the blue fabric. And then I have to look at my uh, guide here. One of the things I forgot to mention, keep those diagonal seams of those half square triangles all running in the same direction that it's shown on my pattern or my layout. Not really pattern, it's a layout, because I'm using the AccuQuilt guide to use it. Let's see. One, two, three. And then we're going to throw in one of these, if I can find them. There we go. It's going to start looking pretty soon like a, uh, it, very shortly you'll start seeing the wings, but right now I know it doesn't look like much. So you're going to use background fabric, one of those half square triangles with the angel fabric and the background fabric, and then three of those uh, white and white half square triangles, one of the blue, and then another one of the white and white half square triangles. You're gonna piece this whole row together. All right, so there is my uh, section number three. I'm gonna set that aside and we'll do section number four now. So for section number four, you're gonna lay it out as follows. Another one of the angel bodies. I love that pale blue. I think that's really pretty. Kind of angelic, <laughs> if you could call it that. Let's see. Again, you definitely want to keep, I actually have this right next to me to follow along because it, it's very easy to get the pieces mixed up. So I highly recommend you go download load that and, and, um, and uh, keep it next to you. All right, and one more. 
you'll see my hand moving over. It's because I'm counting out to make sure I have enough pieces. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, we're good. So this is the layout then for section number four of putting this angel together. And again, you just sew it across and make another strip. Alrighty, so here is um, the section number four, and we need to do one more section number four. So I would kind of consider this uh, section number four A. The other one just has a has different coloring, but it's the same layout of, of number of blocks and, and where the, the squares are. So I'm gonna leave this one out for reference. And then this next block, you're gonna lay out like so. There you can see that crown starting. And there, and then the rest is all background. And you sew it together just like this one. Alrighty, so here's that other section for much more heavy on the green and there's that crown. So now we're gonna sew a few of the sections together. And um, let me go ahead and pull back. I'm gonna pull back the first section four we did. Pull, make sure I put them in the right order. I'm gonna set this one aside with all the green. All right, let me make sure I'm doing this right. It's hard because it's kind of upside down, so it's it's interesting. Uh, you gotta wanna make sure. No, here we go. <laughs> you gotta, I, I tell you, I have to lay this out and really think about it before I sew things together. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to sew this row. In fact, let me rotate it around because that's how I was showing it to you early, earlier, excuse me. This was, this was section three, and this was that first section four we did, and you can see how that, that wing is starting to form here. You're gonna sew these two strips together. I highly, highly, highly recommend pinning, uh, press them, I press these opposite ways, and I pin right here on every seam because you wanna get nice sharp, a nice line there with that pretty angel wing. And you're just gonna sew a quarter inch and sew this section together. All right, so here are those two sections sewn together. The next thing you wanna do is add one of those fa background fabrics that was cut out of template, uh, the AccuQuilt template C. You're gonna add that to this green end, very easy to do, that should take no time, and press that out. And then we're gonna set this section aside. So for this next section, it's section number five. You're gonna to need to piece a lot of different rows together. Let me go grab them. They obviously just fell on the floor. All right, here they are. They fell all over the floor. Let me just lay this out for you. And again, this is all in that diagram. Whoops. This is where you want that other. Let me think here for a second. Yep. Is that right? No, that's not right. Let me think. See, this is why I need this, um, I need that pattern. You really do have to pay attention. Sorry about that. Um, it's really important to pay attention. There we go. Now we're coming together. Phew. I was getting nervous there. I always, when you're looking at this background, you think you might be messing it up, but you're not. Okay, so for right now, we're gonna do it like, these are all the half square triangles that we sewed together, and then this is that section C, and we're gonna do that. So the first thing you wanna do is sew together all the individual rows, one, two, three, four, okay? So we're gonna do that first, and then we're gonna sew the rows together, but I'll show you how it looks before we sew all the rows together. All right, so here are the four rows set um, sewn together, and well, individually sewn together. Now we're gonna sew this whole section together. I did press each of these rows in an opposite direction, so they'll nest nicely, but you can see where that wing is starting to take shape. All right, so here it is. You can see that wing starting to form, and now we're gonna start um, sewing together our angel block. Very easy. It really isn't. It's just a lot of steps, a lot of cutting, but when you're done, it, it comes together really easily. We're gonna pull back that square we made, and we're gonna lay it out just like this, and you'll be able to see that on the diagram. And you're just gonna lay these and sew together on this edge right here using that quarter inch seam allowance. 
All right, so here is this section. And now what we're going to do is we are going to sew, remember that one, need to find it. When you remember that one section four, the second section four we did, we're going to sew that to the top of this like so. You can see now there's that crown, the angel's crown, and there's that center body. It's really coming together now. All righty, here it is. And now we're going to add the next section, which was, I have to remember what the next section was. Oh yeah, we're, <laughs> we're going to add this D. Remember that, that one strip we had left, we're going to add that to this end. So it's going to look like that. We're going to add that here. All right, it's starting to take shape, take flight, I guess you could say. The next thing we're going to add is, if you remember, we took those two sections, we sewed them together. This was sections, whoops, make sure I'm doing this the right way. There we go. Uh, it would have been a, a weird looking angel if I'd done it that way. Anyway, you're going to add those sections. This was that sections three and four, the first four we did. Um, what the three and four, excuse me, that we did. We're going to sew that to this edge, making sure to pin it every seam. There are a lot of seams here. It looks a little wobbly right now, but when you start quilting it and everything, it comes together really nicely. So I'm going to do that. And then we have one more strip. Let me just pull that over since that way it'll be easy to see. You can sort of envision it. So the first thing you're going to do, well, you can't because I don't have the this, I have a monitor when I film my videos. It's actually really helpful. So there you go. You can see that angel for staking shape. All right, our angel's almost done. Isn't it pretty? I love it with the green background versus the blue. I'm going to show you at the end, of course, both of them compared. Um, but now we're going to just add this row to here, and we'll be done with the center section or the main section of this angel wall hanging. All right, so here is my finished block. It should measure about 14 inches, finished 14 and a half right now. And I will trim it down a little bit. Sometimes the edges, you know, there's a lot of triangles here and it, they get maybe a little bit of, a little wonky with pressing and all the quarter inch seam allowances. Here is what a tree of life looks like with the AccuCulco die, gorgeous in itself. I love this orange too, that's really pretty. But here it is, I just recolored it and used a lot of the same colors all the whites and everything, and made myself an angel. Now you could leave it like this and just trim it down to 14 and a half inches if you need to, I, you may not need to, uh, but then, or you can do what I'm gonna do and put it on point, and then you're gonna add, and if you remember I had you cut some triangles, uh, uh, I cut a 15 and a half inch square and cut it on the diagonal two times, and get this square so you have that nice angel wall hanging, you are just going to add these to each corner, or each side, I should say, not each corner, each side. You don't have to do this if you want like a different angel or you just want to leave it like this. This is just a little additional and you can really show off your quilting skills like this if you're a good machine quilter. You can add some real pretty uh, quilting stitches to that. You're gonna add one on each side. You're gonna probably do, well, not probably, you're gonna, I would suggest you do these first opposite sides, press them out, and then add these two uh, at the end, and then you'll have your square, and you're gonna to wanna to trim that square down too. But, all right, it's coming together. Now the last thing you're gonna do for this is you're gonna add these triangles here. Now I will tell you one hint I forgot to tell you at the beginning. When you're centering, because you wanna center this triangle in, Flip it over, right sides together, and use this seam here. Use your seams to help you center it. This, and I did that with this side too. If you fold it over, it matches that center seam right easily. So that's a really good way to get you that center point of this triangle. All right, you can see I adjusted the camera a little bit. Here it is, it's coming together. You can see this big green area, which is why I'm gonna add those snowflakes later. Now you can leave it at this. That's perfectly fine. It is about, I trim it down to about 20 inches just to get it nice and square. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. And then we're gonna add those. I added, I'm gonna add red borders. I have silver ones on that blue one that you saw at the beginning. So if you recall, we, we cut strips for this. And you're just gonna add the first off. The first ones were 20 inches long. And you can add those top or bottom, whichever. You're just gonna add those to each side. You can see where I need to trim this still a little bit. So first thing you do is add those uh, two borders on the left and right side. So my two side borders are added and now we're just gonna add the top and the bottom. 
Very easy to do. All right, my friends, here is my uh, angel. Let me move it back a little bit for you so you can see it better. It's a little, we're still not, I still need to quilt it and everything. And I do think, like I said, it has this big green area. This is completely optional, but that's why I made those fun little um, snowflakes. And I'm gonna grab those. And so I have this old cutting board that was no good anymore. And I use a uh, alpaca uh, pressing surface. For my videos it's nice i don't have to run all the way out to my uh, pressing to my ironing board i'm very space challenged in this basement where i film my videos so again i'm probably just going to put three of them here and just play around with the placement a little bit um i try to use the seams on the on the uh the the block to help me out and sort of center it a little bit and I would put one in the middle, now probably two up in the corner. And then again, I follow the instructions of your fusible adhesive. And you may not be even using fusible adhesive. The other thing is if you're really good at embroidery, wouldn't this be beautiful with some snowflake embroidery? So let me just adhere this. This always, I hold my breath on this when I'm using this. I always get a little nervous that it's uh, not gonna stick or that uh, it, you know something happens or it's wrinkled or something underneath. So there's one. And then the next one, and this is kind of tricky because I'm doing it backwards. I'm doing it upside down <laughs> to show you guys. I'm just going to do it like so. There we go. And we're going to add one more to this side. I just sort of like that sort of cohesive look the, where everything's equal. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a little picky, but that's just me. <laughs> you can do, again, whatever you want to do. I'm really thinking like an embroidered snowflakes. Um, if you have a nice embroidery machine, even snowflakes all around it, wouldn't that be so pretty? So, last one. I'm going to add this one. All right, so that was a nice hot iron. They are done. Let these cool before you touch them because they do get really hot. And again, don't press. I was not pressing right on my cutting mat. I have this old, old cutting board that was uh, breaking. And I got this awesome alpaca um, pressing mat. Uh, from in my last island boutique box if you want to see what all i got this was part of it thank you so much to them for for giving us this great pressing mat i really love it and it's perfect because now i have a little pressing surface next to my ironing uh next to my surface when i'm doing my videos all right well what do you think about my angel wall hanging cut with the AccuQuilt go news new dye called tree of life all i did was recolor it put it on point add some corners and a border and here it is, the green one. Green angel, well, it's a white angel with, uh, with green and red. So really festive sort of Christmassy colors. And then on the wall is my blue and silver one. I love those colors too for the holidays. Uh, this doesn't just have to be for the holidays. You can color this any way you want. And this is great all year round. I did add the easy snowflakes uh, just to add a little bit. Like I said, I thought it was a little empty up here on top with all the the green and in this case the blue and I just think that added a little something and then in this one you can see that I went ahead and did the binding in the same as the background and I'll probably do that as well with this one when I'm done quilting it. I do want to thank uh, this month's sponsors as well. Um, as always, Island Batik for choosing me to be an ambassador and always giving us such wonderful products. Definitely, definitely to AccuQuilt for this great dye, the Tree of Life dye. I believe it's pretty new on their website, so go check it out. It makes interesting the Tree of Life, or you can make all kinds of things with it. I urge you to look at the other ambassadors. I will have links to all of their blogs in my blog post. Um, because they're all doing different things with this same dye, and it's really cool what they're coming up with, so I suggest you take a look. Uh, I would like to thank Hobbs Batting. I will be using Hobbs Batting with this, or a fill thread, and always Schmetz needles. And I would also like to thank, it's a new sponsor for Island Batik, and I used them, I mentioned that, uh, the, the cutting mat, Prairie Spirit Alpacas. Uh, that's, I love that, uh, that pressing mat, so thank you to them as well. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much and have a great day.